Hello YouTube and welcome back to the second video on my uh, new machine which is the Dyson Big Ball um, Animal and it's the cylinder version rather than the upright because I've already got a, a Dyson upright over there and this is the uh, cylinder I've got to go with it as my, uh, my new couple of vacuums to be demonstrating and uh, this video we're going to be having a test out we're going to be turning it on for the first time and we're going to be uh, pushing it round and we're going to be putting some test dirt down on the carpet and rubbing it all in and really grinding it down and then I want to see how much this can pick up I'm going to be testing it out on the carpets with both heads and then I'm going to go and put some stuff down in the bathroom floor again like I did with that one which is uh, going to represent pickup on uh, lino because it's, I don't have much hard floor in this house but I do have it in the kitchen and in the bathroom I've got area rugs in the kitchen there, but they stay down normally, so I don't normally lift those up. So we'll, we'll put them down in the bathroom for, for testing that out. And then um, we will try out the mini turbo tool on the sofa here. The cat's donated a little bit of hair on there, but I did clean that yesterday, so there's not a lot on there. I really need to start molting really, so that we have loads of hair to test with it. I'll have to leave this chair for a few days to, uh, to build up a little bit. I'm sure she'll oblige and lie on there and rub herself all over it and get loads and loads of fur. Won't you? Yeah, she's on the windowsill at the moment. That's where she likes to. Uh, that's where she likes to hang out. And uh, I'd had a request to see my uh, my cat from uh, the Vac Mat, so I'll give a shout out to the Vac Mat. Thanks for all your comments. Um, and uh, I know you want me to ask me where I work, but I can't really disclose it online. It's um, if the company found out I was telling people where I work, they wouldn't be very happy. So I have to keep that confidential. All you need to know is that I'm a cleaner, and I uh, I do cleaning in a public sector building. That's what I do. That's my job now. So I use a Henry, uh, most well not a Henry, but I use a pneumatic PSP 180 at work, and they're pretty dreadful cleaners. I'm not very happy with it to be honest, but that's another thing for another day. But yes, the vac mat. I would like to show you my cat, but uh, she's very, uh, she's very timid. She's on the window sill at the moment. She might come through a bit later on and run through the room, but it's not like Roger with his dogs. Cats do whatever they want to do, and they can be very frightened. So I don't want to frighten her. She doesn't particularly like vacuum cleaners as it is. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to turn this on, and we're going to try it out on the carpet as is. In fact. I'm going to turn it on, make sure it works, and then we'll have a close-up of it and all its features, and then we'll do the test. And if necessary, I'll have to do another video afterwards, because it's a great-looking vacuum, it's got a lot of features, and I'm not going to try and cram everything into half an hour. If it takes another video, that's what it takes. At the end of the day, I want people to be informed about the product I'm buying. I don't buy new vacuums very often, but when I do, I like to make it a nice, informed video of what we're getting for the money. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to turn it on, just to make sure if I've not actually turned it on yet. Like I say, I've just unboxed it, just this minute. I'm now uploading that unboxing video to YouTube over there, it's uploading now. I've got fast broadband, so it uploads in about half an hour normally, for us. Um, usually uh, pretty quick. It didn't used to be in the olden days. It would take three or four hours to upload a video of the size that I've put on now. But there we go, let's just plug it in. Cross my fingers that the Malaysian workers have given me a good machine here, that we haven't got a lemon or a Friday afternoon machine. So, three, two, one, fire. Yes, it works.
well. So we'll try it now with just a normal pour it on. Two loads this floor head, it's got max and a min. This is the standard floor head, which is the turbo um, brush. That's now on the maximum mode. I can barely move it. I can see it lifting the carpet, it just absolutely clamps onto the carpet. It's incredible that is. stuff rattling around in it already. I thought it was something wrong with the machine, but it's actually just some rice, that's some stray rice left from yesterday that it's picked up. So yeah, that's um, that's very impressive. I do like that. I like those. Uh, I like both the floor heads. Um, they are exceptionally easy to push. Well, this one is in min mode or normal mode, but if you put it on the max mode, it's very, very difficult to push along, which I expected it would be, to be honest. Because these, these, these machines are incredibly powerful for the wattage of the motor. That is an 800 watt motor, so I've already checked the label. I believe the Eco one, which is the, the uh, Dyson Big Ball Animal 2, is even less than that. I don't know what it is exactly, but that at the moment is an 800 watt motor. And it drives the turbo brush no problem at all, it drives the mini turbo brush. Um, that's extremely easy to push along on the carpet there. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very good. So what we're going to do, I will uh, bring the camera down and we will focus in on the machine and we will see its features. Let's just put the, uh, the handle back on there and nearly take my finger off with it. I've got to, I've got to watch how I put those in so they can catch your fingers. Right. So. I couldn't stop using it, I was really enjoying pushing that round there. It's actually quite quiet, I thought they would be quite noisy, but uh, it's not as noisy as I thought. It might sound noisy on the camera, but uh, in real life it's actually not too bad. Dyson have really, really, really improved the volume level on their latest machines. In fact it's quite incredible, because when I remember how noisy these older Dysons used to be, they deafen you. But these are really, really, um, these are impressive. So here we go. This is the, um, the cylinder itself, the unit, and as you can see from the little demo there of me using it for the first time, whatever you do with it, however you tug it round, and, and literally if you knock it over, it will always right itself, unlike other cylinders, especially Henry's. I mean, I use the Henry at work and I'm forever pulling it over or getting it caught on doorways and then it falls over, and then I've got to go back and pick it up again. Forever doing it. But this... That's just such a good design. I mean, these things always fall over, don't they? You know, you're tugging it round, and often you, you do pull them over. But for that, literally to, to, to literally topple, 
it's, 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 it's really, really good. It's one of the best design of cylinders that I've ever seen. It's so it's not so it's not a long bulky cylinder like they used to be. It's quite compact. It's quite wide to look at it widthwise, and it's quite tall. But you've got a you've got a nice size bin on there. So even though the max line is quite low down, that would hold a fair amount of dirt before it needed emptying. And uh, I think that's actually quite good. That's probably why it's called the big ball, isn't it? <laughs> So there's the uh, there's the, the the cyclones on the top. It's radial root cyclones, and it's got it's a two tier. So it's got an awful lot of cyclones on there, and they're not that noisy either when it's in use. The filter inside, I think I showed that on the unboxing, but I'll show it again now. Is like a uh, a gain. Uh, it's a sock design on this. So we lift the top up, and there's the filter inside there, and we just hold the tab. Well, there we go. A little bit stiff to start with. It's got a little, it's got a rubber seal around the outside to uh, to seal it properly. And there, there's the filter. And we uh, we're supposed to wash this every month and then squeeze it out. I'm sure everyone knows how to wash a Dyson filter. But um, there's the outlet there where the air goes from the cyclones from the top all around the top. There you've got little slits where the cyclones come out. Um, I don't know where it comes out from the, the other ones, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Unlike that one, the, uh, the airflow doesn't come in from the bottom. It comes in from the side. So the airflow comes in there. That's where the suction comes in from the motor. And then the dirt enters the cylinder. Where does the dirt come through? Oh, it comes in the bottom. Blimey. Oh, yes, it does. So this one, the dirt comes in from the bottom of the cylinder. And it goes up the middle. So the dirt must actually come out. Yeah, there it comes out there, look. There's like a... blimey. Let's see if I can get that in, uh, in better detail. Let's just put the camera down. I want to see exactly how that works. So we can just pull that shroud down using the shroud shraper and then the, uh, the bin drops. And there we can see, if I hold that up to the, uh, to the light there, that's where the dirt comes into the cylinder there, through that gap. So it comes up the middle through that pipe, through that hole from the uh, hose, up through the middle of the cylinder, and then out there. So there's no actual hole in the, uh, the outer cylinder for the dirt to come in like uh, on uh, most other ones. Yeah, I believe the DC50 uses that type of design as well. It's actually, uh, they're actually quite well known for getting blocked up. On the uh, on the tube on the DC50 because I've seen videos about that, so it remains to be seen how well this is going to do on the big mess test. Because later on, I mean, I'm not doing it today, but I'm going to build up some fluff and everything. We'll use the fluff to see if that actually gets blocked up in there. Today, I'm just going to use the uh, the porridge oats, the rice, and the salt and all that and the fine stuff. But yeah, and there's there's the shroud. That's a metal shroud. Yeah. So you can see that's very, very smooth, so the scraper when it comes down should pull a lot of the stuff off there. It saves you having to put your hand up in the bin each time to uh, continually pull the dirt out. How well it works in practice, we'll find out. So, let's put that back together, and I think you just put it on a flat surface, and then we can, or can we? Can we press it down? Yeah, we just press that button on the side. And then it goes back down and closes itself. So here's the uh, the, the ball pass. Uh, right, it says here, do not use on rubble, plaster or ash. I'm presuming that if you did that, it would clog up this filter very quickly. But to be honest, I would rather it clog that up than go through the motor and clog the exhaust filter. And I don't know how to get to the exhaust filter on this either. I'd have to find out because I don't think it's that accessible on this machine like it is on others. That's a screw there. I don't think you're intended to open that to take the wheel off. And I don't think you're intended to open that. So I'd, I'd imagine that the exhaust filter in this is one of these lifetime exhaust filters that you're not supposed to change. Hmm. Yes, well, we'll see about that. I shall soon um, find out where the exhaust filter is. But like I say, as long as you maintain this filter in here, I can't see the exhaust filter being a problem because all that's supposed to capture at the end of the day is 
uh, carbon dust from the brushes on the motor. And it would last a lifetime just collecting that. The kinetic ones are where I have my doubts about the very, very fine particles because I've seen videos that say that the kinetics do let very, very, very fine dust through. That gets in the motor, it gets in the bearings and causes motor failure. And that's why I didn't buy the kinetic version of this. I bought the one with the filter in, purposefully. Not because it was cheap, because I wanted one with a pre-motor filter. So there's the... Um... Can we focus in on that? The stock label there. So that's a um, CY33. My eyes aren't very good with that. We're reading glasses on here. CY23, I think that says. And it's uh, there's the there's the, the the power rating. It's an 800 watt, 7.74 kilos. That's assuming that's with the uh, the tools and everything attached, I suppose. So that's heavier than what the upright is. It's not the lightest of machines, this. But then again, you are buying the big ball. This is the full size one. Made in Malaysia, which we all know now that Dysons are made in Malaysia. I don't particularly like it, but that's the way things are going, isn't it? It's either made in China or made in Malaysia or made in Germany. And I've got plenty of made in Germany machines upstairs, Mealers and Sebos. So there's the air input there. So that will take the air from that port on the cylinder so it's gone through the pre-motor filter goes to the motor and out of the the exhaust is not on the wheel on this it's actually on the back so it, it comes out of here as I felt the strong uh, exhaust coming out these are the buttons here you've got your cord rewind and there's your um, on off switch there again the long-term durability of these switches might be questionable because they're very very small it's, it's it looks like ABS this does um, it does its job, but uh, I, just, I just think they're a little tiny bit small. I suppose if they made them bigger, then it might interfere with the, act, the action of itself, writing itself, or snap them off. You know, the, these engineers at Dyson, they pay them a fortune to sit in their little offices and design these things. So there must be a reason why they've designed it with such tiny buttons. There must be. But it really is like a perfect ball. There's nothing else to it, really, is there? I am amazed. It really, it's, it, I just think, it, I just think it's really cute. Yeah, that's fantastic. So there's there's the details of the actual cylinder itself. The hose on this is 1.5 meters long, so it's quite a short hose. Very very short hose, in fact. I would have thought that maybe Dyson would have given us a longer hose, but they seem to be intent on 1.5 meter hoses. It does work all right in practice there, because I've just pushed it round. It doesn't really bang the back of my heels too much. It fixes into the machine on this point here. So as you can see, the dirt goes in there, goes up the centre of the cyclone, and then comes out of that little hole in the cyclone shroud and spins around inside. There's the hose fitting there, and that just literally pushes in and clips in. Nice, nice, it doesn't pull out again, it's nice and secure. It's got swivel on that end, and it's got swivel at the other end. So the handle, this is what they call the, um, the swan neck handle, this one is. Let's just put the camera in the other hand. It's a bit difficult to hold the camera and focus in. So, there's the hose coming up to the handle. And uh, basically, it will go like this. And also, from side to side as well. So you've got really good articulation on that handle and the hose. And then the handle itself will move from side to side, so that you can move your floor head in the normal way. I've clipped the tools onto the front of the, um, the what you don't have to have them on there, you can store them separately, but I think they'll actually look quite neat on there. And they're not going to drop out because they're button fixings, they, they, they click in. They're the same type of fixings on these tools as it is on the new Dyson light ball which is over there. And that's quite handy because the tools now are interchangeable between the two machines, so if I lose one or break one, I've always got one on this machine. So you've got your dusting brush, and basically you are pressing the little button and then you can get it out of the... This is the one I've had a bit of a moan about on the previous videos of the other machine that you have to sort of... Um, let's just extend it here. You press the button, pull it to the end, but it seems to be like a long way from the cuff. I'll get used to it in time, I've no doubt I will. And it's a nice dusting brush as well. You can get down... It's useful for getting down quite low with that as well and getting up high with it to do your dusting.
Again, again it'll go on the end of the wand. So again, there's your um, there's your tool there. You've got the other one here, which is the uh, upholstery tool. That there will click in like so. So that's not going like vax machines where you've got these on there and the hose and the tools forever drop out of the caddy, don't they, when you're using them? But these are nice and secure on there, so they're not going to drop out. Right, on the end of here you've got your um, floor head. This floor head is um, the standard floor head. Again, it's the uh, quick release type. So we can just release it from the wand by pressing that button. And we can pull it off. Now, it adjusts for hard floors or carpets. So that is for hard floors by pressing that top bit down and then I believe pressing the red one down sets it for carpets. So you put your foot on there which basically pulls this centre section back up and then this is the hard floor setting then so you've got your like it's got rubber squeegees on the bottom. Rather than having plastic bristles this is slightly different in the fact that it uses um, rubber squeegees for pick up on the hard floor and I'll be interested when we do the tests later how that does on the liner, whether that actually clamps the head right down and I can't move it. It's a plastic sole plate for use on carpets there, so the centre section, when you've got it on carpet, it, it sort of it pushes up and then pull, it pulls these back. So it works in a very, very different way to the, uh, the standard Miele floor heads that I'm used to. So that now is in carpet mode by pressing that down. And then on here you've got your um, minimum and maximum. So this is like a bleed valve and what that does is you put it on the maximum and then the full suction power is coming through the nozzle into the carpet and when I tried it just now that was very hard to push along. So really on the carpet I'd be better on that setting and then it's nice and easy to push. But whether it gets all the dirt up we'll find out later because it looks like I'm going to have to run into a third video now for some of the tests. But there we go that's just the way it's going to have to be. We like to see all the details on these machines don't we? You know, it's a new purchase and all that, and I'm very excited to have it. So that's the uh, the standard floor head there with the all new style of uh, hose attachment, what they call the quick release. The other one we've got is this here. This is the carbon fibre turbine tool. This is this has been out for a little while now. This one has. It's not got a um, the big thick brush in. It's a, it's a, a a small diameter brush roll. I don't know how how durable that's going to be because on some of the D50, DC50s they were having the troubles that where these black bristles here were all breaking off the brush roll and leaving massive big gaps in. They're only very quite thin so whether that's going to happen on this, if it does I should be ringing Dyson up and they'll have to replace it. And there we've got the, um, the nylon bristles there which I think these are the more durable ones. These are supposed to be for cleaning carpets with and the black soft ones are supposed to be for use on hard floor and they are very very soft those bristles very soft you get little roller wheels underneath and then the base plate is actually sort of uh, it rocks backwards and forwards so that as you as you're pulling it back it will move up and down to fit the contours of the carpet and I quite like that and then you've got your uh, little miniature ball on the back of here so that you can move it from side to side but if you go too far with it it does tend to make it go like that so you, you've, got to be, you've got to be a bit careful how you steer one of these you've got to, it takes a bit of getting used to and uh, you can't turn this on or off either it's always on basically I think that there is uh, a little screwdriver fixing so that you can undo this and then pull the floor head pull the brush roll sorry straight out that way um, have I got a screwdriver? Let's just have a look and see how that works. Yeah. So, let's just put the camera here. I'm going to get my screwdriver and put it in the end. Ah, oh, yeah, you just turn it anti clockwise slightly. The cover comes off, which is like the bearing cap. And then we can remove that from the forehead. There we go. So there's the uh, there's a little miniature brush roll, and that's removed quite nicely. So you could actually take that out now and remove all your uh, tangled up hair from around it quite easily. 
and then I think what we would do is we would uh, make sure that that's nearest to us because that's the bearing the spindle end and the other end is just a hole so that end is the one that goes in first and push that back in like so uh, and see if we can find out how that goes in now that, that might be a little bit fiddly is that the way it goes in yeah so you turn it clockwise and it locks again so that's that's quite easy to do so that's how we maintain that floor head so that's quite good and the last head to look at is this one here this is the mini turbo tool this is the this is the one i wanted to be honest i've never had one of these before and um from what people have said they're actually quite good i know it's noisy because i've just tried it, tried it out a little bit earlier on we heard how noisy it was but they're all noisy these things they're all noisy I'll just take that off and take this packing out and that enables the top to pivot so it's got a little pivoting sole plate on it under spring pressure and then basically these uh, these little cogs spin round and pick up your fur and then it all goes up the pipe so yeah we'll be doing a little test on that a bit later on it's all going to come in the next video now because I'm way out of time on this so this is just basically this video is for the features of the machine in close detail I don't know what that's supposed to be. Oh yeah, that's the little turbine that spins round inside. You can see, see it spinning in there. So the air would come in, drive that, and turn those round. And the good thing about this, this is the new design. So this basically on Dyson's website is £32 on its own. You'd basically, to get one of those, you'd look up the, um, the Dyson light ball animal, and then it would show that as the tools listed for it, and it's 32 quid. But... I can use that on this machine. So this is the light ball upright. It didn't come with one of those, but now it has. I can use that on that machine. So basically this is this is interchangeable now between that and that, which is very handy. On the unboxing video I did show an adapter that it came with as well. That is basically over here. And that adapter comes with this machine. You can you can get these from Dyson as well. It basically converts the uh, the quick release um, color collar or cuff to so the older style of fitting, which would fit the older Dysons like the DC thirty nine. Um, I would assuming the uh, the DC forty ones tools and all that would have that type of uh, cuff. So you could put older type of tools. I mean, not the really old type of tools. It won't fit a thirty two millimeter tool. But I think it's for the, the, the previous generation of tools that you had with the slightly older Dyson. So if you went out and bought um, an, up, an up top tool and whatever they call them and the, the long dusting brush, they would basically fit into that collar. So that you could use any tool you wanted with it then. And you aren't just limited to the ones that come with it. Right, so let's just put the, um, the filter back in the top because I've forgotten about that. We've seen now all the features on the machine. Oh, and there's also this, I didn't mention that, did I? That little uh, button there, when you lift that up, is basically an air blade valve. So if the floor head clamps down onto the floor and there's too much suction, you can just pull that up slightly as you're going along to release the suction. I think that's a pretty good idea, a little trigger to reduce the suction. Because as you know with these, you can't really turn the motor up or down because it needs to be on full power all the time for the cyclones to work properly. So let's just put that filter back in, and I think to do that I've got to take it off, haven't I? Yeah, there we go. Open the lid, and then that can go. That can go back in just like so. And there we go. Closes up and goes back on. So that's the end of the um, the features video where we discussed it all. And on the next video, which should be coming a little bit later on, then we will put get straight on with putting the dirt down and getting going with it. So, see you shortly.